Thank you. Thank you, Nick, uh, for the introduction. So, like say, currently I'm, I'm working as a data scientist at Hashroda.ai. I am concentrating more on the NLP side of things for the drivers AI. So, uh, I'm based out of India, so obviously. So, the thing is, say, like, uh, I, I, I'm sure like you would, you would have gone through all the uh, previous presentations on like the improve, the new features on driverless AI, like and how time series works on uh, driverless AI and so on. So then we, we when we were looking at like what is the type of data that we can include into driverless AI. So the this survey from the Kaggle says that like, uh, like this is about like what type of data people generally use at work. So uh, majority of the people say, which is about 65 by 5 percentage of the people mentioned that they use relational data, which is more like an IID or the time series data. So we first started with that one. And then the most popular data set which people generally use at work is text data. So which comprises of 53 percentage. So uh, and so we started with the NLP recipes for that one. So that's that's what we, we currently have. So and then we have the image data on our roadmap for driverless AI. So in this session, so I'll, I'll talk about the current NLP capabilities that we have uh, inside the driverless AI. So, uh, if you want more information, we also have a blog post on this one. So, which is the, the link is given at the bottom. So, please feel free to like go read more about it. Um, so, yeah. So, what what currently do we have in the driverless AI? So, um, uh, the, along with the structured data from which we extract a lot of uh, different types of features, and then we build models on top of them. So, currently, we if if we also have some text features on uh, in our data set. We extract several different types of text-based features, and then we use all the modeling algorithms that is present inside the driverless AI to to make our models. So and so the thing is like even if you have a combination of both uh, numerical, I mean structured data as well as the text features, so driverless AI will be able to uh, handle both of them together to build the models. So like what are some of the examples for the text classification part so uh, these are some of the examples like which which businesses generally come across say for example say if, if there is an uh, a document or an incoming uh, text request in the form of mails or chat so and if you want to uh, classify that into one of the multiple predefined categories say like uh, whether it belongs to technology sports or entertainment in this case so so that's that's one common example which which people generally come across in nlp and some other i mean one more pretty common one is like say sentiment classification where we want to uh, figure out whether the review that has been given by our customers belongs to is positive negative or neutral and so some to give some more applications where this could be potentially used in the business uh, the first one which we already covered is just more like an automatic tag of in incoming customer queries and say like if if you have a very good social media presence so most of the times like people are uh, talk about the uh, company or the organization in social media and if you want to figure out whether it's really a complaint or if, if people is just posting some facts or so something about the company then that that's one place where the text classification can be used and uh, and it it could also be used along with other numerical variables like to figure out uh, the credit risk <coughs> propensity models and so on and yeah, so, so one another example is like say uh, emotion detection. So like whether the uh, the text is uh, I mean the emotion from the text is happy or angry or sad and so on. So uh, and it, it it's also commonly used in uh, multiple places these days to detect the profanity of the uh, text. And and one more most common use case is Pamham classification. So if if there are few use cases from this which is present in the business, then like de definitely we could try out travel essay for that. And now I'll, I'll move on to like say the different types of features that we create inside the travel essay. Uh, so one is we we create the traditional uh, NLP based features. So we we do create the simple uh, frequency features where we count the uh, number of times that each of the terms that occur in the uh, given text. So uh, it, it's not just at word level, we do at n-gram level as well. So that's one type of feature which we create. And we also do create features based on uh, TF-IDF. So the reason is like say, if, if we have just a frequency based feature, then like uh, the most of the times the stop words could come at the top. So it has very high occurrence, but probably like it won't take uh, have much value during the classification pro process. 
So, so TFID of kind of uh, is a trade off between the high occurrence of words as well as the, uh, uh, I mean, very high value words. So, so TFID of is one more set of features that we create currently. And we also create word embedding based features. So, so this is like, say, if you use a bag of word feature, so even if there are two related terms, so we won't be able to get a relationship between them. So for example, say if there is if there are two terms, man and woman, so it's it's very similar to one hot encoding. So it will go into two different uh, features columns. So instead, like if you use uh, so this word embeddings are nothing but say a uh, vector representation for each of these words. So that like say in in this uh, high dimensional space, uh, the the word relationships are preserved, and so we get a semantic relationship between them. So for so. For example, in this first graph, as we could see, like the the in the n-dimensional space, the distance between man and woman is almost similar to the distance between king and queen. So these kind of uh, semantic similarity is preserved when we do word embeddings. So that's the reason, like word embeddings are are one important features along with the traditional ones. So we create all these different types of features. So this this slide is a uh, this slide puts together like the different set of features currently which we create inside driverless EIA using the three methodologies which we discussed before. Uh, as you could see in the first one, so we get the TFID of and frequency and then, so we, we generally get a very sparse uh, feature set out of TFID of and frequency. So we do a truncated SVD on top of that one and use that as uh, uh, the feature set. So this last column here represents the feature names that we can see in the driverless AI. If you use the uh, driverless AI, the features that start with txt colon represent the uh, TFID followed by truncated SVD or the frequency followed by truncated SVD features. And then the second set of features which we create is like uh, on top of TFID, we, we build a, a linear model if it's a regression problem or a logistic model if it's a classification problem. And we use that predictions as one set of features. So this is because, uh, and we do, this is very similar to the cross-validated target encoding. Instead of direct target encoding, we build a model on top and use that. So this is done in a cross-validated fashion. So in fact, all these four features, which are below here, are done in a cross-validated fashion. And uh, then like uh, we use also use the word embeddings and we, we build CNN models and RNN models on top of them and extract features out of it. So, so the third and fourth are like CNN and RNN models on top of the word embeddings. And the final one is more like a character embedding. So, so far all the features that the first four set of features are built at a term level. So it could be like a uh, one gram, bi gram or trigram, but say the last one is uh, built at a character level. So these set of features say like, uh, will also help us understand if, if, if something like uh, 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 punctuations play an important role in some, in some of our uh, classification processes. So these set of features will be able to capture that information and get a better accuracy for our models. So we, we get character level embeddings and then we build a CNN based deep learning models on top of the character level embeddings and use that as a, a final set of features. So currently these are the five different set of features that we uh, have inside the driverless AI. So, okay, so, and I, I would also like to share what we are currently working on as part of our uh, NLP thing. So we are, uh, uh, currently we don't have the machine learning interpretability part as such. Uh, inside the drive, in the current version of driverless AI, but this is something which we are working on. So we, uh, I mean, so we are working on different types of MLI models like Lime, Sharp, and uh, Loco. So this is just an experimentation which which we are doing. I just took a picture from one of the experimentation just to show an output of how uh, uh, roughly it will look like. So this is an uh, output from the Sharp uh, MLI uh, Sharp plot, and this is like say this this represents like uh, the the feature value, whether it's a, a very low or high, and the the, the x-axis represents the number of occurrences. So the number of occurrences of the particular word. Say so this implies like if if bad has occur more number of times, then it is like uh, taking our score to the negative region. So uh, and if it's like one or two, so it's like slightly negative. But say like as it occurs more and more, so the it's it's pulling it more towards our the the negative score. So as we could see here as well, so like the worst as it occurs more number of times, so it's taking our score rather than I mean it, it's much more bad. I mean it's it's much more worse than bad. So that's what we get from this one. 
and we could see that if it's great then it's it's taking the score to the positive end so this is these are some of the kind of insights that we could get out of the mli because like this will be much more interesting from a business standpoint to understand like what uh, what things actually drive us to take that classification results so so this is something which we are working on and look forward to integrating that into the future version of mli i mean travel as a and we are also working on the context based embeddings so uh, currently we have the features based on uh, tf idf as well as the word level embeddings but say if if we have something like a word like a bank so it, it could be that like say the bank can come in the context of uh, a, a financial institution or bank could be come in a context of say a river bank so which is uh, so the, depending on the uh, uh, like surrounding words it could take different context so there are like uh, in the recent times there has been like quite a few uh, improvements with respect to the context embedding so there have been papers around elmo open ai gpt and bert and so on so we are also trying to integrate this context based embedding uh, models into our system so we that's that's something which we are currently experimenting with and it's also showing us some good progress compared to the other ones so so this is something which we are working on as well and yeah so these are some of these mo some more things like say uh, using the pre trained word embeddings rather than uh, learning the embeddings from scratch and inclusion of meta features like say uh, the number of words the number of stop words and all those stuff and uh, if some basic pre processing steps like say stemming and so on so so these are some of some more things that that we are working on so uh, from a presentation point that's what i have but i would also like to take you through the uh, say like Uh, the actual travel essay so how to work on that so it it's very similar to the structure data problem or a time series problem but it's it's a like uh, okay so this is a already run experiment say if you take some new experiment so this is a sentiment classification data set so say okay no so here our target column is airline sentiment and say we can drop okay so I, either way so we could have both the text as well as the numerical columns or we can just choose the text column so just for ease of purpose i am just taking the text column alone but we can select the other columns as well so here we are trying to predict the airline sentiment just based on the text so we could see that we we have some uh, f text based features here so we can get an idea of like what are, what text based features will be created depending on the settings here based on Uh, the feature engineering search space that has been shown here so in this case it will create text and text linear i'm not sure whether it's uh, yeah so in this case it's just text and text linear so if you want more uh, the the deep learning based models we need to go to the expert settings and should turn on the tensorflow based models because like say only then we'll be able to create the rnn and the cnn based features okay cool so now the interpretability is still high so we are not getting them over here so let's reduce the interpretability so now we yeah now we got the uh, the like the word embedding based deep learning models as well so and it it's and after that it's pretty similar so we just need to click on it and like it will automatically do the feature evolution and the modeling uh, say model tuning and all those stuffs very similar to what it does with the structured data uh yeah once the experiment is done we could also see the different types of features that it has created like say we could see the cnn based features the gru based features and yeah and all those features over here so i think yeah that's pretty much from my side so yeah i i would also like to like say uh hear your feedback like if you get a chance to try out this one and like if if you have any feedbacks please feel free to reach out to me as well thank you so, so we do have a couple questions on slido um srk if you mm -hmm. can answer them thank you uh okay so any plans to implement levenstein distance for string matching uh okay so uh we we are trying to see if we could somehow uh, add a textual relevance like given a pair of uh, strings uh, i mean pair of text columns so that's something which we are uh, looking to it 
and as part of that we 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 could potentially add this levenstein distance as one of the features as well so but yeah but that would be that will be after what we are currently doing under bird models and the mli for the classification ones oh okay that's a good question the second one can dais nlp can handle asian languages oh okay so actually we we tried uh, the nlp on other languages like say we i have tried it on uh, arabic and like say one of our customer has tried it on spanish and like i have tried it on few indian languages as well and it worked quite well because like uh, the features that we create are not really uh, i mean so uh, uh, this language specific but say i i i see that like chinese is uh, or japanese is kind of different because like we won't have spaces in between but i hope like with the help of the character level cnn we would be able to do a, a decent job in that languages as well but yeah if if someone tries that out i would be happy to hear the feedback will there be an opportunity for normalization of micro text uh, micro text I mean, I, uh, if if any, what? if anyone actually asked that question, uh, if they could clarify, maybe I can give you the mic. I, I'm, no, just as far oh. as like um, when you're working with either like Python or Ruby, like what is the like what like different kinds of abbreviations, whether it's in receipts or tweets or different things like that? Oh, okay. So, oh, okay, okay. So it's like uh, uh, say ab abbreviated forms, right? Right. Uh, okay, cool. So uh, currently, uh, we don't have any uh, abbreviation correct correction per se. So uh, probably like as part of the text cleaning process, we, we will look into that one. So sure, thanks for that input. Will you be providing important information on characters and as well as words? Uh, okay, so I, I hope this is, uh, the, this is with respect to the MLI part. So currently, we, we'll, uh, we are working on the word level uh, MLI, but not really on the character level ones. So potentially we could take up take up on that character level uh, importance as well. But I'm not too sure like how much that would be really interpretable if we say like A is more important than B. So, uh, but say as a feature importance, yes, we we do get the feature importance for the character level models as well as for the word level models. Thank you.